So this is our fourth video on our road to the RSA encryption algorithm and as part of the discrete math course at Harvey Mudd College. Today we're going to talk about a mathematical principle that's used throughout mathematics and that's going to be important to us before we talk about prime numbers and divisibility. And that's mathematical induction. So what I want to do is set up an intuition for what mathematical induction is all about before we actually get into details with examples. So the idea is you start with a list of statements the statements are each going to be indexed by positive integers. So there's going to be a statement P1, a statement P2, a statement P3, etc. One for every positive integer. So to get a picture in our mind of what happens in this process, I want to imagine each of the statements being attached to dominoes. So we know the following thing. If this domino is knocked down, it's going to hit this domino and this domino will fall down. So if we associate the process of falling down with whether or not a statement is true or false, this would be like saying if pk is true, then pk plus 1 is true, no matter what k is. Okay, if we had these dominoes standing, would we know that all the dominoes fall? Which is the same as saying the statement that all of these individual statements are true? Well, not really, because we haven't hit any dominoes to begin with. But if we add the condition that P1 is true, then we will have knocked down this domino. Remember, knocking down dominoes is our equivalent of saying a statement is true. That would make P1 true. Now, because P1 is true, we hit the second statement, and this statement is going to be true as well, which is equivalent in our diagram in our mind to this domino falling. And consequently, P3 is going to be true because this domino fell, hitting the next domino, etc, etc, etc. So once we trigger this domino, knowing the fact that when we have a domino that's hit, the next one gets hit, all of these dominoes are going to fall. So the proof technique here is if we have statements labeled by the positive integers, and we know two things, that the first statement is true, and that if any given statement is true, then the next statement is true, we can use these two together to say that all the statements are true, period. Let's state that as an actual statement and then use it in an example. So our framework is as follows. Suppose we have these statements indexed by the positive integers and we need two things. One is that statement P1, the first statement, is true. This is usually referred to as the base case. And then the next statement is that for any positive integer k, we know that if, I want to put a big if here, if P of k is this true statement, then, that's what this implies is, pk plus 1 is a true statement. This is usually called the inductive step. So again, let's analyze what happens as a consequence. From this base case, p1 is true. Now for any positive integer k, we have this. So if p1 is true, that means p2 is true, setting k equal to 1. But now p2 is true. So we have p1 is true by the base case, p2 is true now. Now p2 is true, so by the inductive step again, p3 is going to be true. And we keep cascading to get that all of our statements are true. So I want to see an actual example of how this plays out to get a sense of why this is a good technique to prove things. Right now we're doing things in the abstract, I want to see things concretely. So as a start, I want to look at adding the first n odd positive integers. So if we take just 1, we get 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. If we add 5 to the result, we get 4 plus 5, which is 9. And then add 7, we get 16. And you might see that these numbers are familiar. We have 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, and 4 squared here. Now the question is, does this pattern hold forever? We're noticing it happens in these early values, but we hope that this actually holds forever. So we can use the process of mathematical induction to actually establish this. And the way we'll go about it is think of each of these as an actual statement. This statement here is the statement p sub 1. Here's our second statement, that 1 plus 3 equals 2 squared. Our third statement is here. Our fourth statement is here. And so what's our general statement pk? If we look at these numbers, the last number here we have is twice the input value we have for our statement index minus 1. So it looks like our statement is that 1 plus 3 plus 5 up to 2k minus 1 
is k squared. And so this is the thing we're going to try to prove using this process. So I'm going to put this statement in here to remind ourselves of that and then go through the process of using these to prove this statement actually is true regardless of what k is. Okay, so let's go through this process first proving this base case. So our base case is the statement p1. p1 says that 1 up to, and then we have to take 2 times 1 minus 1, that's 1, so we stop here, is 1 squared. And this is definitely a true statement, both sides are 1. Okay, our inductive step asks us to assume pk is true. So that would be saying that 1 plus 3 plus up to 2k minus 1 is k squared. And then it asks us to establish that pk plus 1 is true. Right, so our goal is to use this and work toward proving that 1 plus 3 plus dot 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 up to 2 times the quantity k plus 1 minus 1, because that's the statement, the left hand side of the statement of pk plus 1 equals the quantity k plus 1 squared. And so the remainder of the mathematics that we actually need to do is somehow go from here to here. Now, one thing to do is observe how these things are related. Um, so here we're adding up odd numbers. This last odd number is twice this quantity minus one, which is 2k plus two minus one, so it's 2k plus one. So the odd number right before it is the quantity 2k minus one. And now we notice that we have the sum of the odd numbers up to 2k minus one already assumed from the fact that p of k, the statement p of k, was assumed to be true to begin with. So if we have this statement, then this, we can add this quantity to this here, and by the fact that this statement is true, we get k squared plus this quantity. And that is k plus 1 squared. So we've established that p of k plus 1 is true. And this is true no matter what k is. All right, so let's recap and think about this because you might be thinking, well, how can you assume pk is true to begin with? That's kind of not what we're doing holistically. What we're doing is looking at the process and saying, hey, we showed p statement p of 1 is true. Now we've shown regardless of what k is, if it happens to be the case that statement p of k is true, then the next statement p of k plus 1 is true. And that's what we established here. So as a consequence, when you use these two together, p1 being true, together with this implication, regardless of what k is, we get the cascading effect that we saw with the dominoes that establishes that all of these statements are true. Now, when you look at this, it doesn't seem like this is very applicable in a number theory sense. And a lot of the work that we've been doing so far has to do with divisibility and things like this. So I want to bring another example that actually uses that instead. So let's look at this example here which asks us to prove that 6 divides the quantity 5 to the 2k minus 1 plus 1 for any positive integer k. Now there are different ways to prove this, but I want to actually use mathematical induction to do it. So let's create a statement right here, p of k, that says precisely this. All right, so going through the processes, we want to first prove that p of 1 is true. p of 1 would be saying that 5 to the exponent 2 times 1 minus 1 plus 1 is divisible by 6. Now this quantity here is 5 plus 1, which is 6, and 6 definitely is divisible by 6, so that statement is true. Now in our inductive step, we want to prove that if p of k is true, then p of k plus 1 is true. I'm not going to write down these abbreviations of the statements. I'm going to actually write down what it is that we're given and what we want to prove. So we want to start off with the fact that 6 divides 5 to the 2k minus 1 plus 1, and somehow conclude that 6 divides 5 to the 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 plus 1. If we simplify this, we can rewrite this as uh, 2 times k plus 2 minus 1. So I rewrite this as 5 to the exponent 2k plus 1. So we want to show if this is true, then this is true. And that would establish our inductive step. So it's not clear how to go about this. And in every induction problem, you're going to use to use the mathematics that's at hand. And here, the divisibility properties are what we're going to use. So one way to establish that something like this is divisible by 6, if you know that this is, is to look at their difference. So the difference between these two 
is 5 to the 2k plus 1 plus 1 minus 5 to the 2k minus 1 plus 1. These ones cancel and we're left with 5 to the 2k plus 1 minus 5 to the 2k minus 1. And this has a factor of 5 to the 2k minus 1 in it, which leaves us with a 5 squared minus 1 when we common factor. And if we look at this quantity here, this has a factor of 6 in it. It's actually 24. So this quantity here is the sum of this quantity here, which is a multiple of 6, and this quantity here, which we assumed is a multiple of 6 as well. So in conclusion, we do get that this thing is a multiple of 6. So pk plus 1 is true if pk is true. And that establishes our inductive step. Great, so let's look at one more example to see how complications can arise if we try to use induction the way that we've stated it so far. In this next problem, we're going to define a sequence. It starts with a1, which is 1, a2, which is 3, and then it's recursively defined as follows. Any term is twice the previous term minus the term before that. So for example, a3 is twice a2 minus a1, which is 2 times 3 minus 1, which gives us 5. And a4 is twice a3 minus a2, so that's twice 5 minus 3, which is 7. So you start to see a pattern, 1, 3, 5, 7. It seems like, in general, a sub k is the kth odd number, which is 2k minus 1. So let's write that as our statement, that pk is the statement that ak is 2k minus 1. And then look at possibly trying to prove this inductively. So I'm going to skip the base case for a second and look at the inductive step. So in the inductive step, we're assuming that P sub K is true. So let's say P sub K is true. That means that A sub K is 2K minus 1. And then our goal is to prove that AK plus 1 is twice K plus 1 minus 1. Now the only thing we have to appeal to to figure out what AK plus 1 is, is this recursive equation. And it says that a k plus 1 is twice a sub k plus 1 minus 1, so that's a k, minus a sub k plus 1 minus 2, which is k minus 1. We made an assumption about what a k is, is 2k minus 1. But unfortunately, we didn't make any assumption about what a k minus 1 is. So we need to sort of adapt our inductive processes in order to be able to handle situations like this. And the way to do this is by doing something called strong induction. So in strong induction, what we do is you make an assumption in the inductive step about all the previous instances of our problem. So we have these statements again, and our base case is going to be that P1 is true. But now our inductive step looks a little bit different. It's going to say the statement that for any k, if you assume all the previous statements are true, then the k plus 1 statement is true. If you have these two together, then it turns out that all the statements are true themselves. So let's actually see that that makes sense. So first of all, the first thing tells us that p1 is true. Now, if we look at k equals 1 in this situation, we'd get only p1 here. p1 is true, so that would imply that p2 is true as well. Now if we apply this inductive step again with k equals 2, we get the statement that if p1 and p2 are true, then p3 is true. They are both true, so this is true. And then again with k equals 3, we have all three of these are true, so that means that p4 is true. And we see the cascading effect that allows us to establish that all these statements are going to be true. So it seems kind of weird because you're assuming a lot more than just the fact that p of k is true. But as we see here, it still allows us to establish that all the statements here are true. So let's use that to actually fix the problem we had in the previous problem. So with this sequence defined recursively as follows, our statement was that the kth term is the kth odd number. So I want to skip to the inductive step here. 
So we're supposing that p1 all the way through pk are true. So what we're saying here is that a sub n is 2 times n minus 1 for all the values of n that run from 1 all the way to k. And now we want to establish our hope is that a k plus 1 is twice k plus 1 minus 1 or 2k plus 1. All right, so let's use this recursive equation to see what happens. So a k plus 1 is twice a k minus a k minus 1. Now, unlike the last time, we can actually plug values in here. Here we get 2k minus 1, and here we get twice k minus 1 minus 1. So one thing we need to be careful about is what we're doing in the inductive step. For example, if we look at the inductive step when k equals 1, that would be saying that p of 1 is true implies p of 2 is true. Um, and we'd be using this process to do that. The problem is you can't really apply this process because this actually works only for n greater than or equal to 3. That should have been greater than or equal to 3. So you have to check that manually on its own. So sometimes you'll have additional base cases just depending on your setup. So be careful to check what your inductive step is actually saying and if you can actually prove your formula using the inductive step. But luckily, A2 itself satisfies this formula off the bat. Great, so now we have mathematical induction and strong induction in our toolkit. And we're gonna use that in the next video where we talk about primes and how divisibility is related to prime numbers in general. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.